Okay. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Oliver Kahn. I work in public engagement at the World Economic Forum. I'd like to welcome you to the eighth annual summit on the global agenda, the third that's taking place here in Abu Dhabi. Very delighted to say this is a, possibly the most important um, summit ever held, a very important year for the forum in terms of our established uh, identity as an international organization for public-private cooperation. It's also a very important year for the network itself. It's, uh, the councils are entering their second year of their two-year term. So this meeting will see the, um, yeah, the, the further progress towards hopefully positive and profitable fruition of their projects. This will be their second time meeting physically in the United Arab Emirates and uh, hopefully will be a lot of action. You may have noticed a slight innovation to this press conference format. We've done away with the table. The whole idea is it's more informal and more relaxed. So, uh, but we'll still have similar format to follow. So I'm going to ask my, uh, my panellists um, shortly to offer some insights and a few words on their expectations for the meeting. And then, of course, we'll have plenty of time for questions afterwards. So um, before we do go to the, the opening remarks, I'd just like to introduce my panel. To my immediate left, needs no introduction, Sultan Said Nasser al Mansouri, the Minister for Economy, United Arab Emirates. Next, we have Ali Majid al Mansouri, Chairman of the Department of Economic Development in Abu Dhabi. On my far left, Mr. Lee Howe, my colleague, Managing Director, Member of the Managing Board of the World Economic Forum. So, I'm going to start by asking Minister al Mansouri just to share with us some of your views on the meeting and perhaps offer some insights into your expectations and your hopes for the next three days. Oh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, let me just first uh, thank you also from the media for being here uh, with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, well, definitely uh, your role has been very important. Uh, I must uh, really uh, communicate that uh, in terms of really uh, highlighting the importance of the summit, which leads at the end of the day to the big uh, summit, the big forum, which is in Davos. And of course, providing for the right information to the readers, this is essential from your side, because uh, the way I see it is not only us sort of passing the message, but also how the readers are interacting and also uh, sort of behaving with the message that's been being sent through uh, the media. What you write, this is going to be uh, noticed by the leaders around the world, not only here, but I can assure you in the UAE, we pay a lot of attention to uh, how you uh, portray your uh, messages. Uh, and sometimes we do also correct them, by the way, because uh, there might be some misunderstanding or a need for more clarification, and we certainly do that. Uh, I would like to start first with why the UAE. Of course, the UAE government has been very committed on uh, an agenda, very clear for the year 2021. This is a sort of a, an agenda that uh, encompasses a lot of uh, sectors, including, of course, the economy, social, education, uh, and many, many others. And of course, we cannot really achieve success in this without coordination also with the local authorities, with the, the different Emirates. Uh, my uh, colleague uh, from uh, the Department of Economic Department in Abu Dhabi, uh, Mr. al Mansouri, is also uh, very keen. By the way, we came from the same tribe. Maybe some of you ask why we have the same last name. There are no family relations. It's a tribe that we have also. Uh, and it's part of our lines. He's my old brother. Yes. <laughs> very nicely put. Uh, but what we try to do is... Uh, you know, the UAE has been a, a magnet of so many different nationalities. Uh, it is known for its tolerance. It's known, of course, on the other side for its uh, excellent infrastructure that we have, the, the ease by which you can also uh, come over here. And we have managed over the past uh, 43 years to really establish a, a very global sort of setup in, in, in this country. And everyone feel, uh, feels at home. And we said, why don't we add up to it? Uh, another dimension, which is trying to uh, put a message to the world through the structure that has been established here, through one of the best and largest organizations, which is the World Economic Forum. And through that, of course, through the uh, Summit on the Agenda, we are ab able to benefit, but also sometimes uh, participate in a very essential issues that not have been on the radar of the WEF in general, including some of the issues of the region, or issues pertaining to certain uh, 
maybe challenges that we face here in the UAE, uh, to be more uh, specific, and how we can, through this kind of uh, meetings and re, uh, through the attendance of so many of these thought leaders, we could also get their opinion, their uh, viewpoint and them in a very sort of uh, clear and uh, very directive way. Of course, this place has been a center of trade. As you all know, historically, uh, this place uh, we've seen from uh, the Greek to the Romans to the Arab uh, civilization and all across the times has been a very important part of uh, communication with the world. And hence, this is not strange to us to be able also to hold this kind of meetings here. The contribution of the OE to the summit has always been very uh, positive, we always try to take some of the success stories that we have achieved over here. One of the success stories uh, of the UAE, and I think you have all experienced it, is how we have directed the economy and also the revenue is coming from the different sources, including oil, to build a, a society, well-educated, but also to build a very strong economy, a diverse economy that we started with in 1971 with 90% oil reliance, and GDP down to only 30% that is coming now from uh, oil, with an aim and objective to, to continue with the diversification of this economy as we move on. Of course, it's very important to sustain this growth as we go on. There are a lot of challenges happening in the world right now. I mean, as we came out gradually from the crisis of 2008, and we thought we were coming out of it the last year and a half, two years, we start having some challenges also here and in the world. I mean, from the uh, slowdown of the economy of China to uh, some of the challenges in the EU, uh, aside from that, the uh, political crisis in our region. Uh, it, all of it sort of put some kind of a breaks on, on, on the way that we in the UAE was, were looking forward toward uh, uh, having a positive growth in the world economy, and of course, including the UAE, because the UAE benefits from the positive growth of the world economy. As I said, we are a center uh, of the world, because yes, uh, two days back I was in London, and this gentleman, British gentleman, a politician, he said, you know what? We are not anymore the center of the world. You are the center of the world. And I think he takes it geographically, but he also takes it from the way we have been able to put the best of the people in this place here. And when they talk about globalization, I always say we are already living in it. This is globalization. Uh, countries have to be open about it. If they want to succeed in the future, open up. Let the best brains come to you and challenge them and make sure that they also are part of you. The summit uh, is very important for us, all of us here. Why? Because a lot of issues are being discussed individually and sometimes at the level of universities, academic, and it could be bilateral between ministers, it could be between you know, some other smaller conferences that's been done. But here, we will be having up to 900 of the best thought leaders from around the world from so many different countries are participating over here. And through this, we are openly discussing everything. Of course, they have, been, they have identified actually nine challenges for uh, this uh, summit. And if I may just go through them quickly uh, for your information, the nine global challenges initiative that has been identified. One is the economic growth and social inclusion the agriculture and food security. Both of them are important for us also in the UAE, and we have already taken some steps toward addressing these uh, challenges. Uh, employment, skill and human capital, environment and resource security, future of global financial system, future of the internet. I think this is something very important for all of us. Where is this taking us? Recently, we have the JITEX in, in Dubai, and the question that was, I first time I've heard it, is, is this technology taking us in the right direction, or this is going to be something challenging for us from a social point of view, from many other point of view? This is, I think we wait to see the answers maybe through some of the experts that we are going to uh, meet in the next two, three days. The global uh, gender parity, international trade and investment, and we know with the economic crisis, 
the issue of investment become a, a, a challenging issue for many nations, especially nations that were planning and looking forward to attract investment in order to be able to revive their economies again. And then long-term investment uh, mainly on infrastructure and economic development. And of course, uh, we recognized this issue way, way uh, earlier in the formation of the UE uh, by making sure that the logistics in general, whether it is uh, Ports, airports, highways uh, have to be to the best of international standards, standards. But not only that, but to make sure that we sustain the growth that we see in the passengers, in the trade, in the goods in general, to be able to accommodate and make sure that we do not lose that race, because it is really a race at the end of the day. And uh, my uh, colleague to my left here is one of the best to also maybe highlight a little bit on that issue because uh, Abu Dhabi right now uh, is investing uh, a lot in terms of building one of the best airports in the world. Uh, I had a, a very good visit to, to this airport and I was very impressed with what they are doing over there. Of course, there is Dubai also with the Dubai World Central uh, combined with these two uh, and other airports in the UAE, uh, we are looking at a target of 200 million passengers. I mean, we are already taking a lead from uh, major airports such as Heathrow, but looking at 200 million passengers, of course it will pro provide a lot of challenges for us. Provides the challenges in terms of technology that we will need to implement in this. Uh, we will be, as I mentioned earlier, going into uh, uncharted uh, lands in this case, or uh, uh, spaces actually, because we're dealing with spaces, airports uh, in particular, and how we are able to create innovation uh, that will be able to handle and address uh, these kind of issues in terms of movement of passengers, movement of luggage, security, uh, freight and cargo, and many, many others. So I am leaving a challenge here, even for you uh, from the media. Because this area of technology, and when it comes to the uh, transportation and logistics and so on, this is going to be something interesting as we move on, even within the uh, summit agenda. Because uh, I do believe it's critical, very important for governments to continue around the world, not only in the UAE, to continue to invest in infrastructure. It is their way forward of growth in the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to add a bit of context there, the UAE, just so in case you, you missed our global competitiveness report, which we launched at the end of September, ranked fourth in the world in terms of infrastructure this year. So it's a climb from 19th in 2008. So progress in the right direction, for sure. Uh, Your Excellency Ahmed Zori, uh, perhaps you could also share us uh, some of your views, perhaps from the perspective of your uh, position as chairman of the Economic Development Board. Sure, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for everyone to you here today. Um, I'm honored to be a co-chair for the summit this year. It's the third time that is held in Abu Dhabi, and the eighth time uh, in the UAE. I would just say that uh, to all of you, prepare to be thrilled in the next three days. I think you will hear lots of good ideas, uh, lots of skilled uh, speakers and um, professors and uh, from around the world with backgrounds of politics, economy, IT, environment. We are very excited uh, to have the summit here this year. I think uh, most of the discussions will be around very critical issues. And as the minister mentioned early, there are eight or nine mandates that will be discussed. Uh, I think you will hear uh, uh, Best of the best will come and talk to you. Uh, we are all looking forward to hear their reviews. Generally speaking, what the next days will carry is a very critical piece of information. Some decision makers will take these informations and may produce valid and uh, uh, good decisions in their businesses or uh, politicals or colleges. So we are very excited. Uh, as the minister mentioned earlier, the OE is the center of the world. Yes, we live within the global uh, uh, environment, uh, platforms. Uh, we are diversifying the economy. Uh, horizontally, we used to be a vertical economy back in the 60s and the 80s, and we used to be uh, one single source economy. 
Today, uh, oil makes up about 30 percent from the UAE in general. Uh, Abu Dhabi makes up about 50 percent. Uh, this wouldn't have to take place if there was no plans, no strategic uh, initiatives that took place back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, back in the 70s, one of the giants of the investment houses that is on today, idea was created in 1976. This was part of the visions that Sheikh Zainis uh, saw back in the 70s and, uh, and decided to diversify into uh, other sectors, which, which is financials. Today, uh, the economy is diversified. Horizontally, we are driving this forward. I think most of the plans on the federal level, on the state level, on the Emirates levels, are you know uh, uh, driving forward to that plans. We are very excited. I think uh, in the next few days, uh, all of us will learn. I, I advise everyone to attend, uh, to ask questions. We have diversity of ages from college student, from high school student, and to uh, and all people like us here sitting. <laughs> so we'll all learn, and we welcome you for the third time in Abu Dhabi, and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Lee, there seems to be a clear alignment between our global <laughs> challenges and, and, and the strategic direction of the the United Arab Emirates. Perhaps you could give us some context of how, what the global challenges mean in this meeting and what we can expect from the next three days. Well, thank you. Thank you all. And, and first, let me, on behalf of the Managing Board of the World Economic Forum and its members and partners, thank uh, Your Excellencies for being a co-chair of this eighth summit, but also to the government of the United Arab Emirates and, of course, our partners, governments of Abu Dhabi and also of Dubai. Um, because I'd like to just focus on, on I think, two red threads that just, just come out of this our, our discussion so far, a long-term vision and, and really diversification, which is another way of saying innovation and the need for diversity of thinking. And if you think about, uh, reflect on this eighth summit, uh, it's, it is indeed um, the most distinct and unique global brainstorming. It's, it's a brain trust looking at these major global issues, over 900 participants from 77 countries. Uh, this is truly unique in this day and age when you think about uh, really uh, pulling people together to really focus on common challenges and aspirations. Uh, but I would also say um, that it was also very much the brainchild of, of the forum's own partnership with the United Arab Emirates. And you had mentioned that this is the year where our formal recognition as an international organization uh, for public-private collaboration um, this is really one of the most important and I think symbolic platforms uh, with the summit. You raise the issue of the global challenges and of course they're very much aligned. If you have a long-term view of things, and this is what's arguably in deficit around the world, but a long-term view would take you to very much similar places about the importance of education, inclusion, skills, infrastructure. In fact, infrastructure is a long game and again to the credit of the government, it thought of this, it was thinking years ahead. In fact, it's almost if we think about it, it's like planting trees. You have to have a long vision. So this is where we're very much aligned because the global challenges that we've set out, the nine, are going to certainly be our responsibility in this generation, but it will really determine the fate of the next generation. So again, I also want to thank uh, our partners here for not only uh, participating as members of councils, and we have uh, uh, a strong contingent of UAE, Emirati, uh, experts, but we also have invited as observers the younger generation who really are the future and the sooner we can get them to see how we are connected and how this inter interdependence adds to complexity but also provides opportunity, the better. Um, I think all of us here, if we were able to connect the dots much earlier in our lives about how the global economy works and how uh, and really how innovation and, and technology were going to evolve, we would have, we certainly I think have benefited from that from that early clarity and vision, and this is what we attempt to do. But I think, again, central point here is that in order to deal with these long-term issues, which we've identified and very much track with, for example, uh, the Vision 2021 uh, agenda in this country, you'll need to really think through 
various options. This is where the diversification, the diversity of thinking comes into play. And we have special sessions that rely on new technologies. We have transformation maps where we've mapped out the drivers and agents of change in 87 diff 86 different areas and how they interconnect. Uh, we will be actually, that is part of a, we have a software package that enables that to help facilitate the conversation. We also are very much focused on how to actually uh, advance dialogue and interaction, looking a little bit about the behavioral science. How do you nudge people to think openly and collaborate? Um, because after you map these complex ideas, and that's the benefit of the technology, you still need to inspire and really, in a way, motivate people to commit to advancing that. And this is what's so special, because this part of the world, this country, is bringing people together. And in this instance, in the next few days, we're doing this for, I think, a very noble and worthy cause, which is really to address collectively these important global challenges. So I want to, again, uh, reiterate the gratitude and appreciation, uh, not only from the World Economic Forum, but for all the experts who've traveled from those 77 different countries to our hosts here. Uh, thank you again. Thank you. Now, we will take questions as we always do. Just to remind you, the, uh, the, uh, the questions should be directed around the meeting and the purpose of the meeting. So please, can we have a show of hands first? Who, who wants to be first up? OK, well, we'll take the lady there. But we'll take Mr. Kane in the front row first. Mr. Kane, can you remind us where you're from and, and your name for those who don't know you very well? That, that, yeah, hi. Um, Frank Kane from the National Newspaper, Abu Dhabi. Uh, uh, Your, Your Excellency, you, you uh, uh, reminded us of the very successful uh, uh, policy of economic diversification uh, away from oil dependence. Um, but many experts now think that the oil price is locked in a much lower uh, level than it has been historically. Can the UAE afford to continue this policy with oil at $50 a barrel? Thank you. I think it's a good question. I've been asked about this so many times. And uh, it's not only a, a challenge for the UAE, it's a challenge for the rest of the world because so many other nations are very much dependent on oil. Of course, the uh, UAE, uh, for a long time, they have uh, managed to develop quite a, a sophisticated diversification of the economy. Uh, and we have also a plan to reduce reliance on oil by a further percentage, maybe up to another 10% in the next 15 to 20 years. It depends, of course, at the end of the day on the performance of the economy as a whole. Of course, what the UAE have done over the years, they have also managed to establish very solid funds, international funds, which has been able uh, to uh, invest and create a, a return on their investment that's almost making up for some of the uh, fluctuation in the prices of oil. But I'd like to take you also into another uh, area which is that the world cannot afford that the prices of oil stay at this level because it's an indication of the situation of the world economy. And the world economy is definitely going to pick up. The expectation 2016, maybe the second half of 2016, we'll see, we will see a, a positive indication of pickup of the economies of China and many other parts of the world. And this is where, of course, the, also the price of oil, there is a, a, a a forecast that it is going to increase also. Now, maybe the next the second question is where it would go. And it, there has been, and my colleague, the um, Minister of uh, Energy, have indicated several times that they look at $80 as the ideal uh, price for oil as uh, we go on for the next phase. Uh, I think also the, uh, the decrease in the prices of oil over the past uh, uh, few months uh, it's, a, it's a chance for many uh, other uh, economies in the world to take advantage of this and review their economic agenda and make sure that they build a momentum toward growth. This is very, very important because a lot of uh, economies, uh, part of the structure that they were facing was the high prices of oil. And now there is no excuse for them not to try to make up for that in terms of providing for a new agenda to build up their economy. And hence, also from our side, we do feel that, uh, in a way, the uh, decrease in the price of oil, that actually solidify our uh, agenda of diversification and making sure that the effect of any future reduction in the prices of oil as we move on in the next 10, 15 years is not being felt as much as it is right now. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the lady there in the uh, email. 
please. Can you just wait for the microphone? Can I ask in Arabic? Uh, please. please okay. My question, uh, Your Excellency, is about three points. First, uh, first of all, uh, about uh, the reduction of oil prices. Uh, is it expected as uh, the uh, subventions to the oil were removed that uh, the subventions to other sectors will be removed uh, to in in uh, the coming years also? Uh, my second question is about providing job opportunities. Was the economy capable of providing new job opportunities? And what are your forecasts for next uh, year and the new jobs? Uh, my third question is about uh, the SMEs and if they will get a push after the new reforms were adopted and the new law. So the three questions, let me write them down, says the minister. If there are any other sectors other than the oil will be uh, freed or the subventions will be removed. In the UAE in general, we don't have subventions. Maybe the main uh, sector that was uh, that had subventions was uh, the energy, and those subventions uh, were removed uh, in a very smooth uh, way and was accepted without any challenges or issues. The second question was about the number of jobs. New jobs. Obviously, uh, the economic growth uh, in the countries in general and in the UAE uh, expected uh, for 2015 is between three and three and a half percent. Obviously, this growth has consequences uh, translated in new job opportunities. We're not looking just at uh, economic growth away from other factors, uh, for instance, like the increase uh, in the numbers of planes in the national fleets, which means that there are uh, new job opportunities for pilots. Also in construction, uh, we have new uh, important uh, pro infrastructure projects like the airport, uh, highways, and this will create also new job opportunities in this sector. So the economic uh, cycle with an increase in growth uh, lead uh, naturally to an increase in job opportunities. I don't have the figures, but I can get you the figures. The last aspect that you touched on, and I can link it also to my answer to the job opportunities, is that the UAE indeed was able to promulgate an important law for the SMEs. The first meeting for the SMEs Council was held three weeks ago, and we started with the implementation of an action plan for the development of the small and medium enterprises at the level of the UAE. Obviously, locally, there are funds that spe specialize in at the SMEs, SMEs, and we have the Council. We have a certain budget. You know that we talk about 10 percent in addition to training, to funding. 10% of the development bank funding will be dedicated to the SMEs. We have already started with the implementation. We have the council and the program. The program facilitates SMEs. And so now there's a clear orientation with a clear roadmap at the federal level and local level to have a greater uh, contribution uh, in the GDP from the SMEs. Right now, the SMEs contribute 60 percent, and we expect to increase uh, that the international average is more than 90 percent. We aim to reach that level. That will take time, obviously, but we have a solid and uh, the right basis to achieve that. So your questions focus on the meeting, please. I would also just like to add that my colleague Miroslav Duzek uh, is here in the front row for any questions on the forum's work in this region. Mirek is the head of the MENA region at the World Economic Forum. Sir, you'll be next, but I'm just going to go to the lady in the back row, please. Can you just wait for the microphone? Hi. Good afternoon to you. My name is Olia from the from Alvayan newspaper. The recommendation and the outcome of the, uh, the global agenda will go to the in Switzerland in January. Will the leaders listen? What, will the world leaders take what you're going to, you know, all the conclusion? Because we have a global agenda summit every year. Have you tell us anything that the leaders took over the years? 
from yes. the conclusions. And then my second question is uh, His Excellency Mansouri. We're talking about the prices of oil is going down by 50%, and with Iran's possibility, they are going back to the more oil production, which that might bring the prices of oil down. Is imposing tax is a must now rather than maybe? Thank you. So, sure. Thank you. Uh, no, indeed, um, you, you, she was referencing the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in, in Davos, uh, Switzerland, which will take place in January 20th. And indeed, um, having the dual responsibility of the meetings, I can assure you that the discussions here will definitely shape the agenda. Now, your question is a, is a more difficult one because I think what we can only do is really frame the agenda in a way that is compelling to those leaders, both from industry as well as in politics, to, to and civil society to focus on. And, and just remind yourselves that we have, for example, um, a very important climate talks in Paris that are coming up in terms of the area of uh, sustainability. Um, we know that there are also trade talks that will be in Nairobi. Um, this is the moment, and, and there, there is the global governance mechanism that you're aware of, uh, that we're all aware of in the different summits. But I think this is the moment, actually, interestingly enough, is to focus on not just the urgent, but the important. Um, because the discussions we're having uh, regarding food security, so, uh, the, uh, the health in, in areas of, for example, one of the areas that we will develop a, a, a initiative around is on global health challenges, uh, infrastructure, as you meant. You have to have a long-term vision, and you're going to have to bring the different stakeholders around. So yes, I, I think that there will always be, and this is the case in January, it's the first international meeting. There will be, uh, I think, very much on the forefront, global priorities that are part of the new cycle and beyond. But we also have to take this ad ad, uh, opportunity to really take these ten, these nine challenges and lay them out and also explore how they connect. And how do we do that, to your point, to listen? I think the first, what you have to do is create an environment where it is less formal, where people can be open to exchange and have a dialogue. Many of the political uh, discuss discussions around the world are not exactly dialogues. They're one way, or they don't involve other stakeholders. So we've by design built in the other stakeholders, but also create a place where it's conducive for discussion and debate. Uh, because some of these problems are very difficult, new, adaptive challenges that will require so new solutions. And that will have to you know, force people to, to think in new, innovative ways and take on some risks uh, as, as leaders. And, and that's why I think this meeting is very important, because we can at least show where the opportunities are, maybe reduce the pro risk profile of some of the options, but at least present options. Options are very important. Uh, we, I don't think there's any single solution in many of these issues. But if we can get the, these experts here to lay out what can be really not the lowest common denominator, but really the most effective and, and really the most, in some ways, innovative approaches, I think we can do something. And, and of course, I hope that not only do they, they listen, they take action on what we will discuss here when we bring the agenda forward in Davos in January. Thanks, Lee. And if I may, I may just note a few areas where the councils at the individual council level are impacting here in the UAE. I can think of at least four councils that are collaborating um, in this country. The, per, you know, the personal transport automotive working on self self-driving cars. We have the, uh, the Future of Government Council, which has um, collaborated with the government here on, on ways of making better, more efficient, smarter services, government, government services. There are, there are a number of others, so we can brief you on those after the meeting if you like. Uh, if, if I may add that, because she has another part uh, of the question. Uh, but first thing, we are certainly in the UE government, both at the level of federal and also local, we take into consideration all the recommendation that comes out from the summit. This is actually has been utilized. If you look at the issue of innovation, we have adopted a, a strategy of innovation that came up based on recommendation of the summit. We have looked at the issue of SMEs and how we can develop also a system of SMEs based on also the recommendation that we need to look at that as a government of the OE, which was discussed during so many sessions also. We also looked at the issue of gender equality and what we are doing about that here in the OE and how we can lead in the Arab world when it comes to gender equality, and you see also the result of that. Yes, the governments are listening, but it depends also in each individual government leadership, whether they want to make a change in their countries or not. We, they could be the best recommendation, but if they are not willing to listen, 
I don't think things will ha be uh, happening. So this is the one. Be a good listener, but also be a good implementer of your case. There are some cases that are unique. They can be addressed through these kind of recommendation. And definitely, there are so many different also entities that are coming willing to come and help in terms of implementing these uh, recommendations. Your question was uh, about OPEC, Iran, and uh, Iran, of course, the production of oil from uh, the OPEC is usually controlled under quota, and that's the way it should be also eventually in order to make sure that they maintain a, a viable price of oil as they go on. I don't think they are going to shoot themselves in the foot. This is one. The second was about the taxes and whether the oil prices situation would introduce taxes. And I, I think you mean here in the UAE. Any decision on at GCC, I mean any decision, I, I'll take the UAE uh, case, any decision on any issue in the UAE, usually there is a process of uh, decision making uh, in, in the government. We discuss this thoroughly, thoroughly. we uh, evaluate in terms of how it affects the economy as a whole, how also it affects our competitiveness as a nation. And then also uh, we are part of the GCC and within GCC there should be a common policy when it comes to taxes and so on. So this is something that I am not saying that it's going to be now, but future wise, if this is something that could serve the interests of the country and the government and the people, I think this is, uh, uh, could be open just like every other nations have had also taxes. Which can ask Lee to come back in. No, I just want to, obviously, uh, I want to just highlight one other piece, which is a, um, we are going to have a special session or here in, in Abu Dhabi around the future of manufacturing. A very important one when you think about it in the context of the what we uh, will will focus on in Davos on the fourth industrial revolution. Um, we are looking at its implications from a technological point of view, from the economic productivity point of view, from a, a skills and education and employment point of view. Um, it's a very important uh, topic because we're living through it right now. We're probably at its inflection point when one thinks about the, the, the rapid advances in the sensors and systems and even the artificial intelligence that's really permeating through uh, factory floors around the world. Um, we need to get uh, really a better understanding of it. So we're starting here in the conversation um, uh, with, with really a government that is actually looking at it very seriously and, and, and actually implementing and working towards that, uh, building that manufacturing base. So we're very excited about that. And that's one of the many red threads that will continue on into the di discussions and our annual meeting in Davos. Thank you, Lee. I think we've probably got time for two quick questions. Uh, gentlemen here in the front row, uh, sir, did you still want to ask a question? Bearing in mind, we're just taking questions on the meeting itself. Okay. There's a microphone coming at you, Singh. Please remind us of your name and your outlet. Adnan Najam from Al Khalij. My question is to Mr. Mansouri, head of DED. As part of your participation, you were talking about Abu Dhabi and the trends to develop infrastructure projects, airports, ports. And we see that Abu Dhabi has completely changed from what it was 10 years ago, and it knows the great growth. You have strategic projects. Can you tell us about the progress and the directives of the visionary leaders? in Abu Dhabi to promote these strategic uh, projects, uh, the importance it gives uh, these projects. Thank you for that question. At the beginning of the 60s and the 70s, uh, we started uh, building some of the infrastructure projects uh, in the UAE as a whole and particularly in Abu Dhabi. As uh, is usual, after an economic cycle of 15 to 20 years, the infrastructure needs to be renovated, rehabilitated, and uh, the network needs to be expanded. Today, or rather, in 2005, the government adopted a plan uh, to modernize uh, some of the existing infrastructure and to add new infrastructure. The uh, development or expansion included uh, the airport, some of the main highways, connecting us with neighboring countries, uh, some hospitals, but there are also important additions in the Emirate and in the region as a whole. For instance, 
We are building museums uh, that for the first time go out of their countries. For instance, the Louvre Museum for the first time goes out of uh, France and uh, comes uh, to the region through Abu Dhabi. This is a big infrastructure project that is in addition to the country. Also, the Cleveland Hospital this is a qualitative uh, jump uh, and a great jump uh, in the healthcare. We're proud of the partnership we have with the USA, a country that uh, saw the importance of bringing uh, the infrastructure and the know how uh, to the UAE. Also, in the education sector, we have the Sorbonne University, New York University. These are important infrastructure projects that have been planned. What does all of this mean? As uh, His Excellency the Minister explained, uh, this infrastructure pushes a growth at the level of the macroeconomy. We expect uh, with the Ministry of Economy to achieve a, a growth rate of 35 or maybe up to 4%. We just had a discussion uh, about oil prices, and uh, His Excellency uh, was right in saying that uh, 50 to $60 per uh, barrel uh, will strike a balance that can be beneficial to both parties for the uh, consuming uh, or oil importing countries and oil producing uh, countries. We're talking about the current price, 50, 60, or up to $80. That is beneficial for everybody. And historically, there's a strong correlation between oil prices and uh, future growth when oil prices uh, go down uh, to $50 uh, in the long run. Uh, there's a great uh, accelerated growth in the uh, world macroeconomy. So all of this will be beneficial, hopefully, to the UAE. We have to focus on the infrastructure that is needed and has an active contribution like uh, roads, health, education. And at the federal level, as well as the uh, Emirate level, this is well coordinated. Thank you. And before we close, I'd just like to offer this gentleman here in the front row. Please do have a microphone. Yes, we, we, have a, we have a website. We have people watching online. So it'd be, it'd be, we do need okay. you to speak into the microphone. Thank you. Hamid Rahab from Abu Dhabi TV. Sorry, I will ask Please. in Arabic. Uh, my wazir. Your Excellency, you spoke about the importance of this summit uh, that is uh, held uh, with more than 900 participants. And Mr. Al Mansouri said that uh, f this is the participation for the third time. There are many challenges. And since it's the third edition of the summit that is held here, can you quickly give us some of the results uh, that uh, were? Uh, that came from the previous uh, summits, uh, 2014 and 2013. Thank you, Hamid. Uh, one of the main objectives of uh, such summits is how we can use the results of these summits uh, to incorporate them in our agendas in the UAE. If we were to talk about the UAE, even worldwide, uh, the UAE has become a standard for many of the countries of the region and even worldwide in the implementation of a lot of the recommendations that come out of uh, this uh, summit and um, many other similar summits and conferences that are held in the UAE. If we were to focus on one of the main recommendations uh, that uh, were proposed, I mentioned earlier uh, something that had to do with innovation. Because when we talk about innovation, or uh, in the past, innovation was something strange for us. But over the, the course of the past five years, this, um, this became something uh, part of our culture in the UAE and was translated into a comprehensive strategy in this year, 2015. What is the, that is the year of innovation, as announced by His Highness uh, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Uh, uh, in uh, line with the directives of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed, President of the UAE. It was clear that this trend was not only at the level of government organizations, but all sectors, whether public, uh, federal, uh, uh, local, or even uh, private. This was also transferred to education. This uh, does not come from void. We do not necessarily have all the capabilities to cover as all these aspects of innovation. And this is why we were listening to these recommendations. and. We were looking at how 
we can implement them, integrate them, so that they become uh, an integral part of our economy and a knowledge-based economy. We adopted them for a certain period of time in the strategies of uh, our institutions like the um, Department of Economic Development, we are working for a knowledge-based economy if you look at our vision and mission. This is one aspect. Another aspect is uh, the integration of uh, the SME sector in uh, the national economy. We've taken uh, quick steps in that direction, and we were able uh, to promulgate a law uh, for the SMEs. Uh, an issue that uh, showed us we were going in the right direction was equality gender equality in our society, in our Arab society, because uh, this is one of the points that are usually held against us. Uh, we took the example of the UAE and how it was able, building on these recommendations we had started a while back, but there were recommendations that showed that we are on the right uh, track, we're going in the right direction, and as a society, part of the world, and in the UAE, we know uh, we need both uh, genders, and that the UAE women have ha, women has have proven their success in uh, this test uh, for the region, for all the women in the region, and in the UAE. The UAE is a success story in terms of gender equality. These are some of the examples. We also proposed a new agenda for uh, manufacturing, as was mentioned earlier. We've adopted it through the Ministry of uh, Economy with the uh, World Economic Forum and the UNIDO, looking at uh, the uh, orientation of manufacturing around the world and how we can, through our manufacturing policy, uh, can so how we can, based on all of that, develop the manufacturing policy in the UAE because things have changed, especially after the economic crisis and the changes that have been introduced to manufacturing. So in this summit, there are meetings uh, that uh, will be focusing solely on manufacturing, and we'll see how we can come up with a number of recommendations that will be beneficial for us in the UAE. Thank you very much. Now, before we close, I'd just like to remind um, you, my colleagues in the media, that throughout the meeting we'll be having issue briefings in this room. We have about 10 planned, and they very much follow the, the, the line of our global challenges, but they also follow um, issues and, 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 and areas of interest that I think will be quite, um, quite relevant here locally. Future of cities, future of innovation. We have people, experts from robotics, experts from brain science, experts from uh, all areas of architecture and the arts and culture. So there's a very, very um, full program of media issue briefings. Please do look at the press conference schedule. You've all got it when you registered this morning. Before we close again, I'd just like to thank um, Your Excellencies for joining us here again. It's been an honor to share the platform with you. Thank you, Lee, for joining us. And thank you, Mirek, as well. And thank you, most importantly, for yourselves for joining us here for the opening press conference of this summit.